Welcome to East by West Farms. Here we grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Today, I'm going to talk about starting plants, not just from seeds and from other things. This is part four of the series we talk about seeds. The challenge for a lot of homesteaders who are trying to grow their own food is that the food production is seasonal. Um, in some season you have abundance of food and in some other season you just don't have anything in the garden. My solution for that is to plant according to the food fam the plant family. For each family, I will choose se cool season, warm season, and the hot season vegetable within that family. That way, I will have vegetables in that family throughout the, the year um, and get an all-season whole food diet for my family. In part one of this series, we talk about legumes. In part two of the, the series, we talk about uh, leafy vegetables and the nightshade plants. In part three, we talked about squashes. In this part, is we kind of lump of all the plants that doesn't fit into a family. Most plants in these videos are, uh, a lot of them are kind of like uh, spices and the herbs and then some perennials. Uh, and then at the end of the video, I will talk about don't forget your chicken and plant some plants for your chicken as well. For cool season vegetable, of course, you have your green onions and garlics, and then uh, to me, the cilantro. For green onions, uh, we have a video to show you that you can just go to Walmart, buy a bunch of uh, uh, green onions, eat the, eat the top, and then plant the lower one and a half inch or so, and you will get your uh, green onion plants. You don't need to grow that from seeds. That's the easiest way to start your green onion collection. For garlic, of course, uh, you just, I just go buy um, garlic from the grocery store, and then I will plant them. I typically don't collect my own garlic. Um, in the farm, I have enough space, maybe I will do that. But uh, uh, at 8B, it's not a good place to plant garlic. Uh, so I usually grow the garlic for uh, winter vegetable. I eat the garlic greens, and they are very uh, strong taste for uh, cooking, especially in winter when you don't have any uh, peppers, that is a good substitute in a way to add a flavor to your diet. And then, of course, cilantro. We got this, uh, we basically bought a huge bag of uh, um, cilantro from the Hala store, and uh, uh, I just sprinkle them in the yard after I collected all my uh, summer vegetable in, when the first freeze hit and they sprouted, they survived the ice storm. Uh, it, it's uh, uh, definitely a nice winter vegetable. Of course, you can use this as herbs, but uh, you can also use it as vegetable for your soup and even for your stir fry. For warm season, of course, I have basils, and that can go into summer, and this smells so good. So I collected some seeds from that, um, and, and some other veg uh, herbs. I don't use a lot of herbs in my cooking, uh, because for summer, uh, to me, the, to get spices is from hot pepper, so I don't need a lot of other uh, herbs to put get flavor into my food. But I do plant 
uh, gingers. I buy the ginger, I don't buy seed ginger, I buy the ginger from the grocery store. Around this time, if you go to the grocery store, you will see that the ginger is already start to trying to sprout. So you can see this white tip come out. And this one actually have quite a few. Now we have the greenhouse. This is perfect for uh, to get an early start uh, in the greenhouse. This year, I'm also trying uh, some lavender. We have some rosemary outside from the previous owner. To propagate it, the easiest way is you just uh, uh, cut the, uh, the tender branches and uh, grow them from cutting once you have one established. Lavender is the same way, so I'm trying to start it uh, this year um, from seeds. I put this um, in a paper towel and uh, have it uh, uh, stay in the refrigerator for about probably four weeks or so. The seeds start to sprout. I can see the white tips come out. That is, means that I can take it out of the refrigerator and I put it in the garden soil to get uh, um, get the seeds started. Another herb that I really like to grow is a sisal that has very fragrant uh, leaves. Uh, it's go great. Um, and for that, I wait a little bit longer, uh, probably around April, and I will go to the Asian store and buy a bunch of uh, um, sisal and then. Uh, eat the leaves and uh, plant the stems to get my seeds. So I got a few started last year and they're supposed to be perennial. So um, I didn't dig them up, but with the ice storm, I don't know whether they will come back this year or not. To be safe, I probably just wait until see if they come back. If not, then I will go to the Asian store and get some cuttings from the vegetable uh, that I buy. Next, I'm going to talk about taro roots. They're not herbs. I don't know how you categorize them. Uh, maybe they're called a root vegetable. It's, I get my taro roots starting from, from the uh, Asian store. So these are the smaller ones. They are not sprouting yet. I have a bigger one over here that was cut from a bigger one, and I've been soaking the, it in water for uh, about two weeks now. You can see that the top start to showing a little bit white, so that's where the leaf come out. Once I see this, I can um, put it in the ground. That, that means it's already get going, and hopefully we don't get another freeze. The nice thing with taro roots is, of course, it, it's a root vegetable, so it it can grow in very dense uh, clay. Once you put it in there, you can um, just dig it out whenever you um, want to eat it. Like at around this time, we don't have a lot of things growing in the garden. And we have actually a bunch of uh, taro roots that are growing, looks uh, need to be divided. So one task for this weekend is to dig them up and we can take the big ones for food, for cooking, and then save the small one and put it back into the soil so that it starts to grow um, for the summer. The next plant I'm going to talk about is goji berries. These are not from seeds, uh, these are from cuttings. Uh, I actually spent quite a lot of money for this guy. I also uh, bought a pack of seeds, uh, goji berry seeds, and uh, um, they, they get them started in a paper towel and they put in, the, um, in, in a pot uh, before the ice storm. And the pot was in the greenhouse uh, that uh, during the ice storm and the greenhouse was unheated. So I don't know whether they will sprout or not. It did get started in the paper towel, so if it didn't work, I probably will uh, try it next year. I bought four of this uh, uh, goji berry from the um, from cuttings. I spent quite some money on that. Uh, that's how bad I want this plant. You guys probably know that uh, um, goji berry is a healthy, healthy food. Once you get one plant, um, you can grow 
from cuttings, but you can populate them from cuttings very easily to add insurance. I actually bought four plants from cuttings, and uh, that will hopefully will uh, get us started in the farm, a uh, huge production of goji berries. Uh, you can eat the berry, you can dry them. Um, the leaves is also uh, edible, and they're supposed to be very healthy for your eyes and et cetera. This is the only plant that actually I took into the house during the ice storm. That's why, you know, it's a very special plant for me. Another oddity I got is this uh, huckleberries. After I bought the seeds, I uh, I read on Facebook that people was complaining that it tastes yucky and all that. Some people maybe have different uh, taste. Uh, I have never had a huckleberry before, so I don't know. But I want to give it a try uh, because, again, um, if it works out, it will give us berry, which help us to not go to the store as frequent for, the, for fruit. If it doesn't work, um, it's good food for the birds. This is another oddity that uh, is uh, cut flowers. I typically don't grow a lot of flower um, because I want to grow things that I can eat. But I did plant some cut flower last, uh, last year, and these are the seeds that I collected. So it's mainly for, uh, for the bees so that uh, um, they attract the pollinators. Seems to be here, we, we have uh, quite a lot of bees actually, so um, um, it's good to have some flowers for them. The last three seed package I want to talk about, uh, two are corns and one is sunflower. We don't eat a whole lot of corn and they took a lot of space to grow, so we have not grown corn much, uh, especially at home garden. Uh, they don't grow very well, not enough sun there. The same thing with sunflower seeds. I bought this um, really to plant them for the chickens, not for us. I would think it's too much work to process the corn. We probably eat some corns, but for some process, it's too much work to process them and for our own consumption. But it will be good for the, for the chicken. Right now, we have about 20, 30 chickens somewhere in between, and they eat a lot of food. Um, so our plan is to actually plant the crop for the chicken so that we don't need to buy the chicken feed. Uh, that's the long-term goal. I'm going to try the corn and the, the sunflower this year. Uh, I will also try to grow some of the chicken food from the um, chicken scratch, like the millet and the, those kind of things. It's going to be an experiment. We will not let the chicken, uh, chicken starve. But my ultimate goal is to grow the crop so that the chicken um, will not need to eat uh, store-bought uh, uh, feed anymore. The final thing I want to talk about is sesame. I have the package over here that I bought from the uh, Asian store. I tasted it, but I couldn't tell whether it's cooked or not, so probably it has not been cooked. I also bought a package of black sesame from Kitazawa uh, Seed Company. The reason I want to grow sesame is actually sesame oil is a pesticide. It's like a, a, a neem oil. The oil, the hull, and the, even the stem um, of sesame plants are, uh, can kill pests. It's very drought tolerant. Basically, you need to only water it when you, uh, during the seeding time, and after that, you don't need to uh, uh, water it. It, it can, uh, it's actually really like a very dry condition, so that's perfect for us. Plus, the benefit of uh, being able to uh, use it as a pesticide. That's why I'm planting uh, the sesame. My plan is to uh, let it establish 
and then plant in where you will have lots of uh, grasshopper. And then once it's mature, just uh, uh, grind it up and uh, spread it around the, the garden to keep the pest out. This video is the last part of the series about seeding and the planting. And in this video, we talked about all the things that doesn't fit into a big family, so the oddities and the, the food for the, for the chickens and the, the herbs. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumb up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it down below. If you have not done so, please hit the subscribe button to follow our journey with the East by West Farms.